Another big breaking story of the morning, a Ukraine Boeing 737-800 crashing in Iran late yesterday. Passenger jet went down moments after takeoff just outside of Tehran and killing all 176 people on board. Both Iranian and Ukraine officials say they suspect the crash was caused by mechanical issues. Phil Lebo joins us right now with more on all of it. Phil. Andrew, uh, as is usually the case when there is a plane crash, more questions than answers early on. What we do know is that this was a young plane. It was a 737-800 built in 2016. It crashed shortly after takeoff. Uh, there are these reports that it appears that there was a mechanical failure, but let's be honest. Uh, in almost every plane crash, the initial reports rarely uh, tell us you know, what ultimately is the cause of an accident. There are also reports that there may have been some type of an engine failure or an engine issue. The engines on this plane were built by CFM. That is the joint venture of GE and its French counterpart, the aviation company Saffron. It was a CFM 56-7B engine on this uh, Ukrainian Airlines plane. We have reached out to General Electric. It is like GE or like Boeing saying that it is early in the investigation. Still more questions than answers from their perspective. One other interesting note here, Andrew, I heard you mention, and there are these reports coming out from Reuters and others overseas that Iran is not going to turn over the black box to Boeing or to American investigators. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't get uh, ultimately figure out what's in the black box. There are other agencies around the world, but that's part of the geopolitical tensions that will be no doubt making the investigation into this crash much more complex than it already is. Hey, Phil, um, and I, I know that, that at the moment we're talking about this strictly as a mechanical failure and, and nothing more, but do we know about the timing of the crash, not in terms of how many minutes it took off in, in, in that relation, right. but in, in, relation, in relationship to, to the uh, the rockets being to the fired. rockets going off at the same time as you know w within so very a couple well. of hours within, within a couple, a couple of, hours. of hours is my understanding maybe, maybe two to three hours it was shortly after the time when uh, the reports of the rockets being fired on the U.S. airbase came out so you're looking at a, a two or three uh, hour window there right and, and the separate issue I was going to ask you about is the FAA issuing that advisory last night um, around aviation right. in this area. Um, that clearly would not apply outside of U.S. aviation, correct? And does it, is it was a similar uh, warning issued uh, either in the area or uh, by European? To my carriers? knowledge, there was not a warning issued in that area. And I could I should point out that in the past, when we have seen these types of warnings issued, while it applies to U.S. carriers, and they almost immediately uh, will. Uh, honor whatever the FAA right. says. You'll also see other carriers around the world say, look, it's not a smart idea. Let's find a way to divert away from that airspace. You still will see planes take off and land within Iran. It's not that Iran doesn't, you know, it says, well, we can't have any planes flying. They will continue, and they have in the past. So we've seen their domestic uh, flights as well as international flights to and from Iran continue even when we've seen these types of restrictions uh, on airspace or warnings about staying out of the airspace.